Hi there, I'm Black Bright, and um, today I wanted to ask any of you if you're thinking about escaping from one cold country to another. In other words, from the UK to Canada. I don't know how many of you have heard that Canada is looking for one million immigrants between now and 2021. Now, you might all think, oh, great, I can get out of the UK and go over to Canada. But it's not as straightforward. Nothing is as straightforward as that. Um, I think in 2017, they had 286,000 immigrants. Um, this year, they've accepted 250,000 immigrants. Next year, I think it's going to be 360,000 immigrants. And in 2021, they want 370,000 immigrants. So, yeah, that's 286,000 in 2017, 350,000 this year, 360,000 next year, and 370,000 in 2021. So, what's the snag? Can anybody just get up and go to Canada just because they qualify as an immigrant? Well, there is a criteria. Criteria is that you have to be talented and skilled. And it's not too different from the UK, actually, even though they say their immigration policies are a bit more open. You're going to need to show that you can support yourself um, and your family. You're going to need to show at least 1,000 in your bank account, although I hear 1,000 isn't half enough if you haven't got a job to go to. Um, the criteria is that you have, um, there's a point system for professionals and skilled workers um, based on language, um, what is it? Oh, based on education is 25 points, language is 20, no, education is 25 points, language is 28 points, age is 12 points, work experience is 15 points, and arranged employment is 10 points, and adaptability is another 10 points. There is something called the NOC code, and that could make or break whether or not you get accepted as a federal skilled worker. The NOC code is the National Occupational Classification. And what it does, it grades you on skills and work experience. It doesn't matter about what title you put in. So you have to kind of, I'm going to put all the links underneath, but you, you put in all your skills and everything and it brings up a code. And that code will determine whether or not you will be accepted in the program. Now, if your skills, if the skills that you've put somewhere else on a CV or whatever it is, do not match the NOC code, then you're going to be rejected. Like, so say, for example, you said you're, di you're a director of, you're a director of a company. But when you're putting in the skills, you're talking about uh, mechanics or you can do construction or you can do um, administration, stuff like that, or accountancy. It might, might not match with the title you've given yourself. So you have to make sure that the two of them match the work experience and the skills match the NOC code. And you won't know that until unless you do a test run. I think you probably can do a test run on, on skills and know what level or what skill type you are. So that's really important that you actually pass that. Apparently they say that's one of the most important aspects of the application, the NOC thing. Um, what else was there? Let me see, talented. Apparently you might ask, why do they want all these immigrants here? I mean, some people say it's to build up the country as usual. Um, but they are saying it's to offset an aging population and declining birth rate, which I guess makes sense. Um, that means they won't want anybody too old, I guess. Um, 
Let me see. You must enroll in the Federal Skill Worker Programme. Must have been in full time work for at least one year continuously or part time, the equivalent of one year continuously. And that can be up to, I think they say 10 years, but I think 10 years might be, might not look, make you look good. I think maybe if you've done it in the last two to three years, had a year's employment, it'd be it look better. So even though they're saying ten years, I mean, if you go there and you've you know you've got a job that shows the last full time job you had was nine years ago, that's not going to look good. So you have to use your common sense. So even when they give you this information, you have to think, okay, if I was an employer, if I was seeking to have somebody, would I really want somebody who's been out of work for nine years? You'd be a bit sceptical. So use your common sense there. Um, of course, I said financial support. You need to know how to support yourself. If you lose, use the average of the UK, you're in good stead. I mean, you might be um, legally here and you just totally peed off with the way UK is treating immigrants this time. And you might just think, well, you know, I might as well go to Canada. If you've got everything in order... I don't know how you get a job job offer in Canada, but it should be pretty straightforward if you're a skilled worker. You might decide just to go there. It's very clean. I mean, I know it's cold, but it's supposed to be quite a nice place. Oh, another criteria is that you can't you can go anywhere anywhere in Canada except for Quebec. Not quite sure what that why that is. Very very strange, but it might be. I, I plead the Fifth Amendment on that one. Um, so the ex express entry to get your permanent residency in Canada is the um, Federal Skilled Workers Program, which is what I explained to you. That's all the stuff that I mentioned before. That is how you'd be getting in on in on this one million immigrants that they want. Um, it's, it's supposed to be highly competitive, so you'll be competing with other people of like mind. Um, the top, oh, I said that the job title does not determine their national um, occupational classification. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, the way you apply, um, you just, I think if you put Canada Express Entry Online Application, it should come up, but of course, do your homework before you apply so you're not missing anything. I'm not sure if it's one of these where you can go back or whether you can save and go back. So make sure you have everything that you think you might need. It doesn't say um, anything about, I, I mean, I didn't go through the whole gamut because that would take me too long. But it doesn't say what kind of things you need. But just use your common sense. You know you're going to need a driving license. You know you're going to need... A passport. You're going to need. You're going to need obvious documentation to prove your legitimacy and to prove that you are a, a moral person. So it's no point um, leaving one place to go to another place and you're not correct. If you see what I mean. Um, it says that you must check the um, the immigration refugees and citizenship in Canada for more information about how to get on this one million immigrant scheme. Oh, and another thing, apparently um, you're not going to, immigrants are less like, less likely, twice as less likely to get a job than a Canadian person getting a job. And they put it down to the the way they do their CVs. So um, if you're thinking about going to Canada, make sure you find out what a Canadian style CV looks like and adjust your CV to that style. It'll give you a better chance. Um, what else is there? Oh, it's compulsory to take out health insurance. Now, Canada does have a free health insurance. It doesn't cover maternity. It doesn't cover um, prescriptions and it doesn't cover dental, but it covers other things. But it, you, unless you have bought this VH1 um, health insurance, yeah, you will not be allowed 
um, on the scheme or in the country. So you must purchase that. And that is £1,500 for the year. And you must have it for a year. So that's it's quite an expensive undertaking. Um, but the good thing about this one is that you know that they want you even for whatever what their ulterior motive is. Like England doesn't want, doesn't want immigrants. So you know that they're going to do everything to hinder your application. At least with Canada, you know they do want um, skilled um, immigrants. And so therefore they're not going to hinder your application unnecessarily. Of course, they want law abiding, morally upright citizens. But, you know, at least, you know, it's not going to be hindered over stupidness like over here. Um, so that's the health insurance. Yeah. And apparently their wait for um, to be seen is the longest wait in the world. Not even in the city, not even in the country, in the world. So they said up to seven days in some cases when you want to be seen. So it's a, I don't know if that's in an emergency situation. I would hope not. But yeah, so I hope that's given you enough to at least if you were thinking, if you've seen that, um, the blurb about the one million immigrants, you might have been thinking, oh, I might try that. It might be um, a reprieve for me. Um, but yeah, and it could be a reprieve for many. So it's just as you just this is just so you have a rough idea of what's expected. It's not as easy as it looks, but at least, you know, um, how much money you're going to need and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I am going to put links in there. You can follow them. It tells you a bit about Canada as a country. It tells you what you need to do. It tells you about the NOC codes. And yeah, I think everything you more or less need tells you a little bit about the country, about the cost of living, everything you need to know about Canada, should you be deciding to go there and take advantage of the immigration invite. OK. All right. then. Bye bye.